Good morning, church. This is, once again, it's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord, a time of uh, worship and praise of our God. He has brought us into a new month. We're in the seventh, uh, set, <laughs> the seventh month of the year. Yeah. Amen. And actually, our fifth month of this pandemic that we've been dealing with. And I want to say that God has been gracious to us throughout this time. We, we know that there are those that we... Uh, are, are still suffering with their health and job loss and things like that. But in the midst of that, we were all reminded our God is worthy of all the praise. He is sovereign. He's in control of all the things that are going on. So once again, we want to thank you. We want to praise God for all those who had a safe holiday on uh, uh, yesterday when the happy 4th of July to all the those and those that had their barbecues and all the things that were going on. So we're going to open up with our service today, and we want to remind you that our doors of our church are open for those that want to come. We are um, in compliance. We have our chairs are at six feet apart. We're social distancing. We have our masks on. We have hand sanitizers. Everything that you need, that you want to feel comfortable, you can. But if not, if you want to continue to watch us on, on Facebook and on YouTube, we praise God for you. We just want to remind you to continue to like us and share us that others can hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. This time we're going to open up with our responsive reading. Uh, once again, we want to uh, you take your Bibles and turn to Psalms 119. Psalm 119, and we'll be reading from verses 97 to 104. As we said, we are working our way through the 119th Psalm. It's one of the longest Psalms that we have there. It's 176 verses in that. As I said, each week we won't do all of them this morning. Amen. But we're taking them actually walking through the Hebrew alphabets, and we're at the one here that we start today is at Nim. Nim. I mean, at Mim. Mim is the Hebrew word for where we are. And it reads. So we're going to read that together. We're going to ask that you read with me as we read today. And for those that uh, we know you have your masks on, we don't want you to strain yourself, so you can just listen and follow along with us. Amen? Yeah. And it reads. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. Your commandments make me wiser than my enemies, for it is ever with me. I have more understanding than my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the age. I have, for I, kept, for I keep your precepts. I hold back my feet from the evil, from every evil way, in order to keep your word. I do not run aside from your rules, for you have taught me how sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Though, my, though your precepts, I, have, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. And the Lord have a blessing to the hearing and reading of his holy word. This time, let's look to the Lord. Eternal God, our Father, Lord, we come once again, Father, before your presence. Our heads bow, but our hearts are looking unto thee, Father, because you are the author and the finisher of our faith. And today we say, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done, Father, here on earth as it has been in heaven. Lord, we want to just continue, Lord, to just give you the praise and the glory, Father, for your forgiveness. We thank you for the Son, Jesus Christ, Father, and his blood that continue, Lord, to wash us from all of our sin. And we ask you right now, Father, as we empty ourselves in the cares of this world. We pray, Father, and ask that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit, that as we give her to intercede for those who can't pray for themselves, Lord, we know you're praying for us. Lord, we want to continue to pray, Father, for those that are during this time of this pandemic. Father, we want to continue to pray for our seniors, oh God, and we pray for our presidents and those in authority over us, Father, for our pray, uh, police officers and first responders, Lord, that are putting themselves on the line for our safety. Lord, we ask and let thy will be done even in their lives, Father. And Lord, during this time of racial injustice, Father, and uncertainty, Father, we pray, oh God, that you will go into the hearts and the minds of the men, of men and women of this country, Lord, that we realize, oh God, that you are our Father, Lord, and we are brothers and sisters, oh Lord, even in a natural sense, coming from our brother, uh, our father, Abraham, Isaac, me, Adam, Father. And Lord, we just pray, oh God, that you will redeem us today, Father, as you have always done. Lord, continue to keep us to look unto you, Father, because outside of you there is no help. And Lord, we pray, Father, for our worship service today, Father, for those that are watching us on Facebook, those that are on YouTube, oh God, Lord, that you would meet them right where they are. And Lord, we be kept and give your name the praise and the glory. And all God's people said, amen and amen. 
This week is another song, and each week we try these songs here. And like I said, because you have your mask on, we're not going to ask you really to, to sing it. You want, you can clap your hands with us. Uh, it is a communion Sunday, and I always like to open up a song that we all are familiar with, nothing but the blood of Jesus. So we're going to ask that you would just fellowship with us as we sing God's praises. Amen. So that's Judges, the sixth chapter, verses 33 through 40. And I'll have you to just follow along with me as we read this passage of Scripture. And it reads, Then all the Midianites and the Amalekites and the children of the east were gathered together and went over and pitched in the valley of Jezreel. But the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon 
And he blew a trumpet, and Abazar was gathered after him. And he sent messengers throughout all Manasseh, who also was gathered after him. And he sent messengers unto Asher and Zebulon and to Naphtali. And they came up to meet him. And Gideon unto God, and Gideon said unto God, If thou wilt save Israel by my hand, as thou hast said, behold, I will put a fleece of wool in the floor. And if the dew be on the fleece only, and it be dry upon all the earth beside, then shall I know that thou wilt save Israel by my hand, as thou hast said. And it was so, for he rose early on the morrow, and the thrust of the fleece together, and wringed the dew out of the fleece, a bowl full of water. And Gideon said unto God, Let not thine anger be hot against me, and I will speak but thou once. Let me prove, I pray thee, but this once with the fleece. Let it now be dry only upon the fleece, and upon the ground there be dew. And God did so that night, for it was dry upon the fleece only, and there were dew on all the ground. May the Lord have a blessing to the hearing and reading of his most precious and holy word. I want to talk to you this morning about a subject that I believe fits every last one of us of where we're at. And that is God's encouragement for human weakness. God's encouragement for human weakness. And let me say, I believe each one of us at all times in our lives that there's something or a task in our lives and we always come up with excuses, reasons why we can't do what we know God is calling us to do. But we fail to realize God said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. It may have been on a job, it may be in your home, it may have been a, a task in the church that God has given you, and you got so discouraged and you say, oh, I can't do this because maybe you have failed in the past. Well, if you look at the life of Gideon and so far what we have been through, we understand that Gideon had a lot of human weakness. He didn't think much of himself, he didn't think much of his family because he come from a poor background, he didn't have much, and matter of fact, his enemies were actually taking authority over him. So if anybody needed encouragement, it was Gideon. But I'm here to tell you today, and each one of these titles here, when we, we come back, I want to remind you, during this pandemic, during this uh, uh, social and racial injustice and uh, insensitivity, that, insensitivity that we have today, we need some encouragement. Amen. We need to know in the midst of all that's going on, God is with us. So God's encouragement for human weakness, when we feel that, Lord, it seems like the devil is winning. You ever been in your life and you feel like everything that you do, you end up feeling it's like the devil is getting the victory. But I'm here to tell you and understand in all of this here that greater is he that's what? In us than he that's in the world. Amen. See, we need to stop looking at ourselves and start looking to our God. Amen. Amen. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Human uh, weaknesses, but encourages God's encouragement. Amen. Amen. So you just walk with me in my introduction this morning here. We walk back with Gideon as he, we know the Lord is uh, building him up to deliver his, his people out of the enemy, which was the Amalekites. And at, at one time, the, they were defeating Israel under the leadership of Joshua. The same people that God wanted to deliver them from now, or at one time, they was ruling over them. But because of sin, that's what we talked about in the very first sermon, the high cost of low living. Because of the people of God that had all the blessings, he had opened the Red Sea for them, had them walk across for 40 years, he prepared and took a water for them out of a rock, gave them manna to eat, and it says their shoes never wore out. But yet when they got in another land, they forgot about their God. That's not like many of us today, how God has blessed us, but in time we get on the other side, and we get out there and everything is going good. We forget about our God. Amen. But that's just what they did. But now Joshua is dead and there is no king over the people. And the problem arises among the people the same way I do or not. When you don't have a ruler, somebody giving you an instruction or somebody guiding you, people do whatever they want. And it tells us, look what it says in Judges 21 and 45. The same thing it says, in those days there was no king in Israel. Every man did what was right in his own eyes. Sound like today, right? Yeah. Amen. Whatever God you want it to be, that's going to be, I don't need God, I don't need this here. And everybody's doing what they see right in their own eyes. And that's what we see earlier with the Israelites. They were a, a, an idolatrous and a people who worshiped gods of their enemy. Living in total disobedience to the word of God and taught them that the same way their parents died in the wilderness was the same thing was going to happen to them. 
You know, let me say this. Sometimes we look back over our lives and we wonder, we see what our parents went through, we see what our, our brothers and sisters have went through. We ought to learn from that. Amen. 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 You ever seen somebody who, you know, they, they, they may have been got on drugs and their lives are messed up, and you say, well, I, I'd never do that. Well, here, here's in the same situation. They saw it happen to their parents, but yet these children are doing the same thing. There's an old saying, what monkey see, monkey will do. Amen. But, and I know that uh, rubs some of us wrong. But we need to understand that God is still a God of grace and mercy. So now the people had sins that caused them to be overtaken by the enemy to the point that now the children of Israel who once lived in a promised land are now living in mountains and caves to evade the attack of the Midianites. Which leads them to it. They were living, remember we talked about it a few Sundays ago, they were impoverished. Because when the enemy came in, they took their crops, they allowed their camel to run over their land. They had nothing to live on. So they actually lived in province. And that's why Gideon was up there hiding, trying to thresh wheat when nobody could find him. But just a reminder of that, look what we find here in Judges 6, verses 3 and 5. It said, and it was, when Israel had sown, the Midianites came up, and the Amalekites, and the children of the east, even they came up against them. People that they used to have authority now with them and said, and they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth till thou come to Gaza and left no substance for Israel, neither sheep, nor ox, nor ass. For they came up with their cattle and their tents and they came as grasshoppers for the multitude. For both they and their camels were without number and they entered into the land to destroy it. You see what was happening here? The enemy came in, as long as they were living under the uh, life of God, what he was telling them to do, he blessed them. But they're living in a disobedience, and now the enemy is taking all that they had. And you know, I said this, and uh, keep coming back to it. I believe that's where we are today as the body of Christ. I believe the people of God, we have gotten so into the materialistic will, uh, things in the churches, and uh, big buildings, and all this, the glamour of Christendom, we have forgotten our God. To the point now, we're, we're trusting more in the things that, of God than the taking the God that we have. And I believe that's the reason why we're suffering today. Mm -hmm. Amen. Remember when there was a fall back in uh, 27, uh, 2007, and all the economy fell and everything, everybody... People were losing their houses and all those things. Do you know there was, they said it was a recession? But there is no recession with God. Amen. But I believe just as God used a recession for us to look back to Him instead of trusting in our things to trust our God, yeah. here God is doing the very same thing with the children of Israel. And as we look at today, the things that are going economically, socially, and in with this pandemic is all God trying to get us to look unto Him. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. So what God did here, he was trying to get them and to remind them that, that, that just to remember that sin has a consequence. Yes. Amen. Amen. And remember it says that sin will always take you farther than you want to go. Oh, yeah. Cause you to stay longer than you want to stay. And cause you more than you're willing to pay. Sin. Come on somebody, that's what sin would do. Yeah. It will cause you to go farther than you want to go. Stay longer than you want to stay. And cause you more than you're willing to pay. But God loves his people. And when they cried out to him, he heard them. Even in the midst of all they were doing, and the Malachites and the, and the, uh, the, Malachites and the Midianites were ruling over them, they started crying out to God. And when they cried out to God, he heard them. And he sent a prophet to remind them what God had already done. Can I pause for a moment? In the midst of right here, I want you to think back to when you didn't have nothing. I want you to go back when things were tough in your life. And, and who did you look up to? God came through. Yes. And if he took care of you then, don't you know he'll take care of you now? Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. So he says here in Judges 6 and verse 10, he said, And he, I said unto you, listen here, this is what God reminded the same people that he had delivered. The same people that he had brought them to the promised land. And they had gotten into sin and they crying out to him when they needed to be judged. Amen? Amen? And he said, And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the God, small g, of the Amalekite, of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell, but you are not to obey, but you have not obeyed my voice. Hear what he said? Don't fear the people that you are. The reason why you're going through it is because you have not obeyed my voice. 
So God chose the least expected to deliver his people. Gideon was just an ordinary guy. Come from a poor family background. His family didn't have much. And even considered his father was an idolater. And the whole city was in idolatry. But God chose Gideon. Gideon came up with every excuse why he could not serve God. Amen? Look, look what he told him. This is what God uh, reminded him of in Judges 6 and uh, 12 C. He just said here, Gideon saw himself as worthless, not being anything. And he said, I'm just, at least I'm just here threshing my father's wheat. But look what God saw him. He said, thou mighty man of valor. When God calls you, he does not see you as you are. He sees you where you should be. Amen. Come on, Bobby. I can park here for a moment because somebody needs to hear that. Because you come up and somebody always telling you, you are nobody, you're never going to be anything, you can't do anything, you're a poor family. And, you know, in and, 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 and society today, people are putting you down. Yes. But stop looking at where you see yourself and where God sees you. Amen. God is the only one who can call things that be not as they are. Yes. Amen. 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 So you got to see here, said, Gideon, I see you as a mighty man of valor. And when he called him a mighty man of valor, here's what he's saying to Gideon at that time. It means a person of courage, yes. person of strength, of power, and a victorious, and a victorious life. Amen. I don't know about you, that do something good. Here he's telling him now, uh, I, I want you to go deliver my people. And he said, you know, why, why are you going to use me? I, I'm poor. My family's idolaters. How can you use me? And he said, thou mighty man of valor, Amen. a man of courage. Gideon, I'm not looking at you the way you was. I'm looking at where I'm calling you to be. I'm not looking at you as a weakling now. I'm looking at you as a man of strength. I'm not looking at you as a man that has no power, but you have the power of God in you, and you are victorious. So what am I trying to say? Stop looking at yourself where you are, but where God sees you. But even though God had to encourage Gideon, Gideon was still not to deliver, ready to deliver the people. You know, somebody can tell you something, but it's up to, until you believe it yourself. I can sit here, you know, I never forget when I was in school. I was one of those kind of students that uh, I was sitting in class and I did everything else but listen to the teacher. I never get the teacher used to come up and say, Terry, I wish I could just open up your head and pull the knowledge in there. Because I just wasn't getting it. You know what? Because my focus wasn't on that. Yeah. Amen? So even though I was getting the information and telling me what I, what I could learn, it wasn't in me to learn. And I believe the same thing we see here with Gideon. Gideon has some personal issues. His appearance, as a matter of fact, fact, God had to show him. Remember, he had a a, a personal visitation of an angel of the Lord to assure him he was with him. Remember that when he was threshing the wheat to his father? And there was a man sitting on a rock next to him. When we said that man on the rock, he didn't realize it, and he realized that was an angel of the Lord. Can I pause and say this in a moment? Sometimes we didn't realize God would disguise himself as an angel like the devil will. And sometimes, people, very people you don't want to deal with, you may be entertaining what? Angels unaware. That person that you're negative about, you don't like, you don't want to be around, maybe God, maybe, that may be the Spirit of God in that person trying to help you, just as he was with Gideon. Then we saw last week that the first test of obedience where he was to destroy his father's uh, worship of Baal. I don't know if you remember that. Remember, they were worshiping the false god. He told them, I want you to go there and tear down your father's altar. And the Lord gave Gideon to destroy the altar of Baal. And he didn't say to destroy. We talked about that word. Ruin means utterly discredit it. Get rid of it. Destroy it. And I gave that illustration that said that's what God wants to do with the sin in our lives. When we confess and repent of our lives, God will forgive us and it goes into the sea of forgiveness. And look what it says in Judges 6 and 25. And it said, and it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Take thy father's young bullock, even the second bullock of seven years old, and throw down the altar of Baal that thy father had, and cut down the grove that abide it. Gideon, I want you to go ahead. Now, the very first people, before you deliver anybody else, I want you to deliver your family. Amen. I said it last week. I remind you that we clicked. We want to go out there and save the world, and the people in our own house is on the way to hell. Amen. Or we'll, we'll talk to people on our job, but the married brother, our sister, or your uncle, your cousin, or your husband, or your wife there that don't know the Lord. You want to go out there and reach everybody except for them. They need Jesus too. Amen. 
Gideon obeyed the Lord. Yet fear came on him because he said, you know, Lord, I'm going to do it. But I can't do it during the day because they'll see me. Right? So he offered a sacrifice. And then he was to take that same way he was offering to Baal. Then he was to destroy that and start offering to God on that same spot. What am I trying to say? God wants us to renounce the powers of darkness in our lives. That time you used to give to the devil, that money you used to give to, to the world, that time that you would get out there, all the things that you did, you need to give it to the Lord. Amen. So in our text today, we will see the courageous and the public character of Gideon now changes. And we'll see that a fearful person now becomes a person of mighty valor. We will see that his challenge now in the midst of the battle was then to deliver the people of God. We can see now God challenges him to be all that he did in the dark to do in the light. Before we finish, we see now ourselves as Gideon did. Remember how he vacillated between back and forth to God? And we're the same way. Lord, you do this, I do this for you. You know how we, sometimes we want to bargain with God. Lord, Lord, you let me hit the lottery, I give money to you. Like, as God is, 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 is not smart. He realized, if I can't trust you with a little bit, what am I going to give you a lot for? Amen? Amen? So let's jump into this today. The very first point we have is Gideon and his faith. Gideon and his faith. We said all that God had brought him to this point, and I said all that, but we can identify with him. The human weakness of him. Thinking of how he looked at himself, looking at his family, looking at his own inability, but God saw him as a mighty man of valor. And he's still not there. Here it is. In Judges 6, verses 33 through 34. And it said, Then all the Midianites and the Melekites and the children of the east were gathered together and went over and pitched in the valley of Jezreel. But the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon and blew the trumpet, and Asmar was gathered after him. You see what is happening now? Gideon was God's going to deliver the people, but here's the very people he would have. Now, Two enemies had came. First, remember, it was only just the Midianites. Now he got the Midianites and I'm right, and the children of the east. All their enemy was coming together against Gideon and the people of God. But here's one. I want you to catch this here. When the very first of verse 34 it said, but what? But the spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon and blew the trumpet and Asbar was gathered after him. Now, it makes a difference when the spirit of the Lord is in your life. At the time, Joash was standing up. Remember, Joash, his father, uh, uh, was first against him. But he stood up for Gideon. Right? And before the people, the enemy was standing when well, they were setting up camp to invade them. And here's, here's the point that I want to bring out. The enemy's army was 135,000 men. Amen. Gideon was small, didn't have nothing, have much. Here, in the valley of Jezreel was a valley which you call Megiddo. It's the same battle that when we fought at the end with Satan. When we talk about the Armageddon, the same battle was where Gideon was getting ready to fight. Now it's time for Gideon to act. Within himself, he's still not ready. God said, I'll be with you. But can you imagine now, here's a person that was weak, coming from a poor family, didn't think much of himself, didn't really, really trust God the way he should. And now he sees a valley out there which said of uh, uh, Jezreel. And it was, the valley means that it was like a, it was like all the hills around it. In the valley, he could see down there. And you know what he saw? 135,000 of the enemy. I don't know about you. And he said, Lord, do you remember? I'm a nobody. My family is not much. My father is an idol worshiper. And now I see 135 men down there. Gideon started telling the question, said, Lord, you sure? You sure you got the right man for the battle here? Amen. His enemy was getting ready. And for the last seven years, Gideon had watched because every seven years, and here's a number of completion, when it comes in there at seven, every seven years, this enemy would come down and they would take everything that Israel had gathered for those last seven years. But now the Lord said, this is the last time it's going to happen. This is the end of what they've been doing to you, Gideon. Amen. You're going to have to trust me. And let me say to some of you here today. You may be going through something in your life right now, and you're at the end. You may say, I've had it up to here. You have gotten on my last nerve. Yes. Amen. Well, we can say it the same way. The enemy had finally gotten to the point. God said, this is the last time it's going to happen to you, Gideon. But you're going to have to trust me. Yes. 
Amen, church. Amen. The text says the spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon, which lets us know Gideon's faith didn't come from a big Gideon. It came from the Lord. Amen. Amen. It tells us that without faith, a man cannot what? Please, Please God. Faith is a what? It's a substance of things oh. hoped for and evidence of things not faith, right? Then it tells us here, the just shall what? Live by faith. So what am I trying to say? If Gideon, you're going to go in here and delete him, you're going to have to trust God. Amen. And if Gideon didn't have it in himself, remember we talked about the human weakness in himself. He had no reason to trust God. He had every reason to deny God and doubt God because of who he saw himself, what kind of family he had. He had no final background, and he had a small group of people that's going to fight against 135,000. I said, Lord, are you sure you want me to fight the enemy? Yeah. Amen. But I, I can't go too fast when I said the spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. Amen. Amen. Let us know. And it says here in Romans 1 and 17. And you need to mark this in your Bible because it says, For there is the righteousness of God revealed from what? Faith to faith. As it is written, the what? The just shall live by faith. But if you're honest with ourselves, we live by sight. We don't believe until we see it. We're from the show me state. Amen? Amen. It was the spirit of God that came on Gideon and the faith that he had and the courage that he needed for the war call come from God. God wouldn't look at Gideon. That's why he says that he had faith in the size of what? Mustard, mustard seed. Now how big a, a little small a mustard seed is? It's a little tiny seed. But you ever seen a mustard tree? How big it gets? And out of that tree come other seeds and it grows others? So God said, I, I just want you just enough. Just trust me. Amen? You ain't have no great faith. He just wants you to trust him. And get in this battle here. You need to trust me. Let me help someone who thinks that the defeat of the enemy, you can do it in your own strength. You know, I, I don't need God. I don't need God on the job. I don't need God in my marriage. I don't need God in my church. Amen. Remember Zechariah 4 and 6. And this is very pointed here. Because we hear it, it's a rubble. Which would be called. It said, Then answered and spake unto me, saying, this is the word of the Lord that came to Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of all. The only reason why Gideon was going to win this battle was the spirit of the Lord. Let me tell you something. In any way we're going to get the victory over this pandemic, of the racial injustice and the things that are going on in society, it's going to take the what? The spirit of the Lord. Are you willing to trust God in the midst of what's going on? I know it seems like everything is, all hell is broken loose and says, that, how are we going to win? You need to trust me. Amen. And you're running. This battle is not fought in your own strength. Amen. Can I remind somebody that tells us for those who have, well, I don't like them, they don't like me, he said, uh, uh, we wrestle not against what? Flesh, Flesh and blood. But against what? Principalities and power and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. You know what's behind all this that's going on? The enemy of this world. Satan is the prince and the power of the air. God, but still I want to remind you something. And we talked about with Job when, they, when he said, have you considered my servant Job? He said, yeah, I've been watching. I've been walking to and fro. You take your heads from around Job, he'll curse you to his face. See, that was Satan trying to tell God what his people would do. Come on, somebody. God knows your heart. And, and, but, but he also knows, too, he'll never give you more than you can what? Bear. Than you can bear. Oh, yeah. So in the same way he's telling here, it's not by power. Not by, I don't care how much strength you have. I don't know how much intellect you have. That's not going to win the battle that we need. It's going to come from the Spirit of the Lord. I hope I have some help this morning. That you're going through something. You're trying to make it. You're trying to figure out how financially. You're trying out how to get this job. You're trying out how to, to get that man. How to try to get this woman. How how to make things happen in your life is not going to be by might nor by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. Come on, somebody in the house. He didn't have a task. And when the Gideon says, when the, when the Gideon blew the trumpet, the first response for the people from his own village. Remember what we talked about last week? The very people who wanted to kill him is now on the side. These are the same people that, that were standing against him in the fight because he destroyed their idol worship. And it's amazing what God can do when you let the, when the Spirit of God is in control in your life. The very people, he'll make your enemies be at peace with you. Yes. Amen. Amen? Amen. This is the same thing we saw in Gideon. 
Remember, he was full of he was full of what? He was full of defeat, disillusionment, discouragement, and doubt. Every reason why he could not deliver the people. But when the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, he changed. Something happened to a person when the Spirit of the Lord is in control. And now Gideon is operating, going to be operating in the spirit of the power of God. That same principle holds true in our lives today. If we want the power to serve God, to live a righteous life, it's not going to become because you know a lot of Bible verses. It's not going to come because you've been baptized into a church. It's not going to come because every time the church doors are open, you are here. It's going to be called you have first to obey God. Amen. And he fills you with his Holy Spirit. He reminds us that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So we're not talking back in the old days. It was different. Look what he says in 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the what? Of the Holy Ghost, which is in you. Which you are of God. You are not your own. You can't do it on it. Let me help somebody. Well, I, you know, I have my, what it says, uh, my freedom. Freedom of choice. Once you're saved, you don't have a freedom of choice anymore. Now, you make a decision, you take it, but you've been bought with a price. Amen. You know, if I go into Walmart, I made it because, see, y'all shop at Neiman Markets and, and Nordstrom's and I don't, but I go to Walmart every now and then. If I go out and pay for my food and I go in and I my clothes in Walmart and I walk out and that salesperson or a security guard come along me and tell me, hey, come back here and put the handcuffs on me. You know what I'm going to say? Hey, this is mine. Why? I bought this. I paid for it with my money. How dare you lock me up and say I'm guilty. In the same way, if you are born again, you have been bought with a price of the blood of Jesus Christ. You're not your own. You can't do what you want to do, even though you do. And that's the reason why you're not being blessed. Maybe that's the reason why you're struggling in your life, because you're disobeying God. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Say, Gideon, I want you to go fight, but it's not going to be by power, not going to be by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Amen. That's how the spirit operated in the Old Testament. Remember when he would say he would come upon them, right? Here it says the spirit came upon him, meaning the spirit would only come on a person for service. And when they finished doing what God had told them to do, the spirit would leave. Remember he did it with King Saul? He did it with uh, Samson. Samson was doing the work and all of a sudden he sinned, the spirit left. Elijah, the spirit would leave. But it's different with you and I. When you know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, now in the midst of human weakness, God will encourage you and remind you that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Look what he says in John 14, 16, and 17. And you need to get this in your heart, but some of it, I have people praying, Lord, give me more of your Spirit. You've got all you're going to get. Amen. The problem is, he can get all of you. Amen. We have compartmentalized our God. But John 14, 16, and 17 says here, and I pray to Father. This is Jesus praying for his disciples. And we just imply for you and I also. He said, I pray to the Father that he shall give you a, another comforter and he may abide with you forever. And we talked about this in Bible class. Sorry, that word abide means to remain, to, to dwell. It's a sense of permanence. When it says that you abide, he'll give you a comforter to abide with you. When the Holy Spirit comes, he's not coming to leave. Now, when you go out there and sin, it may grieve him and it may vex the Holy Spirit because you're not doing what it is, but he's still there. You know, I gave the illustration last week of my own life in the flesh out there. I, I knew I was saved, but I was living in sin. I was not comfortable. You know why? Because the Spirit of the Lord would not let me get comfortable in my sin. Amen. Never forget, I would sometimes come out there and doing my little dirt. My, I'm in the bed crying. My wife wondered, what you crying for? She didn't understand. My spirit was wrestling inside because I was not walking in the will of God the way I should and here in the middle of the night, I couldn't even sleep. I was unrest because what? My heart wasn't right with God. But the moment I confessed and repent of it, then I got free. Are y'all with me, church? Amen. And what he says here, he said, I will give you another comfort that he may abide with you. Then he says, and here he identifies who he is. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him because, here's that word again, because he what? Dwelling in you and shall be in you. What is he talking about? What came upon Gideon now resides in you forever. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. Today he lives and dwells in the believer. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Come on, somebody. All the power I need. I'm not looking for the choir. I'm not looking for somebody to lay hands on me. I have the Spirit of God dwelling within me. That's why I can say, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. That's why I can say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Amen. Amen. If God be for me, who can be against me? Why? Because of the Spirit of the Lord. Come on, somebody. And we need to start walking in the victory that God has given us in Christ Jesus. Are y'all still with me? I didn't mean to preach too hard. Look at how the faith changed. And now that the Spirit of the Lord has came upon Gideon, look at Gideon and his followers. And this is very important. See, when the Spirit of the Lord is upon you, it'll change people around you. Yeah, look what it says in Judges 6 and 35. Let me respond. Them same people that wanted to kill Gideon for killing them, for knocking down the, the, uh, his father's statue, now I'm going to fight with him. Amen. Look what it says here in verse 35. And he sent messengers throughout all Manasseh, who were also gathered after him, and sent the messengers of Asher and Zebulon and Naphtali, and they came to meet him. Now, these are the people that were on the surrounding places. Man, all that was around uh, the, 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 of the children of Israel. You remember, remember uh, Joshua, uh, Israel had how many sons? Twelve, right? Okay, but now, now look here. These are the ones. They was on the outskirts here. Look at the people that came with them. You had Asher, Zebulon, Natali, and Manasseh. That, I mean, he had a reason now. You got 135,000 people against him, and, and here it is now. He said, now, go get the rest of them. Because people saw Gideon's faith. Mm -hmm. Gideon was willing to deal with his father's sin. Tear it down and start worshiping God. People saw that. Amen. You know, so sometimes the hardest people to reach is people in our own household. Amen. Amen. But when you stand up, there God be with you. Hallelujah. See, because of the Spirit of the Lord was in control, the people followed Gideon. Amen. So it is when the Spirit of God is in control of our lives, it would change us inwardly first. It changes you. Remember Gideon was fearful? Now Gideon was a man of courage, of strength, and of power. Amen. The inward change now outwardly People are seeing in his life. Amen. Yeah. I've already stated that Gideon's own people were the first to follow him after he committed to fight the faith. Fight for his faith and trust in his God. You never know that the step of faith in your life will accomplish in the lives of those around you. Let me say that. I have to read that clip to myself. It said, you would never know what a step of obedience of faith in your own life will accomplish in the lives of those around you. People are watching you. Amen. And if you're sitting there talking about you believe God and something, something start happening, you start, I don't know what's going to happen to me. You know, they're going to get us. You know, it's amazing to me. And I'm going to say this here. Now, 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 don't take this wrong and negative. Even during this pandemic, the one of the things is that, yes, we're supposed to do, but we're supposed to trust God. Amen. And if it says, you know, if we don't do this, we may get it. If we get it, greater is he. Hallelujah. If God be for us. Oh, I'm not saying that, that you can't get it or anything like that. That's not what I'm saying. We need to trust God in the midst of that. Yes. And not have a spirit of fear. Why? Because there are people out there that need to know your God. Yes. And if you're, you're talking about you trust God and you're worried about it. Amen. Come on, somebody. Hope I have some friends after today. Amen. But look what it says in Judges 6 and 34. And as of her was gathered after him, the same one that wanted to kill him is now going to come alongside him. Amen. You like that? Amen. Same one that wanted to kill him. This was his father's, you know, he worked for Joab's. Abazar was the one that came out and said, isn't that Joab's son that knocked down the altar? Go get him. We're going to kill him. And Joab stood up for him and said, if Baal is a god, let Baal defend himself. But because he seen Gideon's faith now in action, Abazar now said, I'm going to stand and fight alongside with you. Let me say something. When you trust in God, you'll be surprised who will be with you. Amen. I found this way. The very people you thought would be with you won't be with you. Amen. The people that the least you expected is going to stand by your side. Those are the ones. I thought, that's what I've learned. Yeah. Everybody say, I ain't Pastor Wider. Oh, I just love you, Pastor Wider. They're not all the ones I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Those same people will turn their back on you. Come on, somebody. Amen. Somebody need to hear that this morning. Amen. Amen. You cannot live a life 
uh, for the Lord, and it won't have a positive effect on somebody in your life and your close friends. They'll know if you're real or not. They'll know. The opposite that can happen. If you're not living to your faith, you, you say you trust in God, but you live, live in a hypocritical life, it has a neg neg negative effect on those around you. Amen? And this is personal conviction. If you ain't right, if it ain't right, don't fake it to help to somebody else. You tell them, I'm praying for you and you living wrong. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. You should never underestimate how God can use our lives to touch somebody else for his glory. Yeah. When the multitudes witnessed Jesus' miracles at the Sea of Galilee, what happened? Remember that? They saw Jesus. Look at here, Matthew 15, verse 31. It said, insomuch that the multitudes wondered when they saw the dumb to speak, the maimed to be whole, the lame to walk, the blind to see, and they glorified the God of Israel. These were the people who knew not God, but Jesus was doing some work around the Sea of Galilee and it changed the people who didn't know him. Even your enemies will have knowledge that God is with you. Amen. I people always tell me, see, I remember where you used to be. Yes, where I am, but you see me now? God did the change, not me. Amen. Not, not only did his own people respond, but they surrounded the region and it was ready to fight. His faith caused others to trust God. Hallelujah. I like what it said in Judges 7 and reads from the ESV. It said, tells us how many people Gideon had to work with. Look here. Let's read here. It said, now therefore proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, whoever is fearful and trembling, let him return home and hurry away from the Mount of Gilead. Now you think about that for a moment. He said now, Remember, it was 135,000 of the enemy. And then God tells Gideon, it said, everyone who is fearful and trembling, he tells them to go home. I can't use them. Come on, this just says something to hear about it. God can't use you because God didn't give us a spirit of what? Fear, Fear but a power and a sound mind. Yeah. Then not only that, he said, there was 32,000 that responded. Now remember, he had a, a 35, uh, was it 35,000 people at the first started with him? And now it says 22,000 people return and only 10,000 remain. Now, now he got to fight 135,000. 22,000 people were fearful. Now these are people that seen God work in their lives already. Amen. Have you seen him in your life? I like what it says here. This is not a right. It said that it's been said that a war is more in a war with God. More is always better. But when when we find let me say this, what we will find is when God is on your side, more is too much. And let me say that again. It's been said that in war, more is always better. But when we will find when we have God on our side. More is too much. See, because God wants to get the glory. He don't want to. And here now Gideon, and you know the story, Gideon ended up fighting 135,000 people. And how many? 300. And guess what? He won. Amen. Why? Because he trusted in his God, not himself. He said, you shall be a mighty man of valor. Stop looking at yourself as you are. In the midst of human weakness, God will encourage you if you look unto him. Why? He is the author and the finisher or the perfecter of our faith. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. We're living in a day when people who are Christians will seem like you're being outnumbered by the devil. Mm -hmm. Amen. The devil seems like the devil is winning. I hear people all the time, isn't the devil still getting the best on my life? Do you understand? Say, he don't who I am. That's it. I'm not talking about arrogantly, but he said this is the confidence we have. Yes. We're more than what? Conquerors through him that love you. You got to know this, church. In the midst of human witness, God, human weakness, God will encourage you if you're looking unto him. We not to be disturbed by the facts and we simply we see to remember that God's spirit is in control. In the midst of what's going on, I know you said, Pastor Ryder, stop going back there. Yes, the, the numbers are rising again. They're shutting down again. Amen. Come on, somebody. Are y'all with me? Oh, yeah. But remember, God is still in control. Amen. Yeah. I don't care how many things they close down. I'm still going to look unto Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Because he spoke things into existence. Yeah. Just this past Wednesday in Bible class, I was talking about God. You know what he said? In the beginning. Yeah. 
But you know, before it got to the beginning, there was God. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about God that always was, always is, and always will be. In the midst of what's going on, God is God. It said in the beginning. So if you forgive there was a beginning, there was God. Amen. Hey, come on. Yeah. And then when it was the beginning, God said, let it fly. That same God that spoke light, the same God that created the heavens and the earth, is the same one that trusts in today. He's the same one that saved my soul. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm. I, I, I didn't want to preach like this this morning. Y'all have to help me. Pray for me and I'll slow down. He enabled them to accomplish some amazing things. Look at Judges 15 verses, uh, or 14 and 15, read for years. They said, we must not fear the power of the enemy. Samson was only one man. Remember him, Samson? Yes, yeah. But look what it says here in verse 14. And when he came to Lehi, the Philistines came shouting to meet him. Then the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon him, and the rope were on all his arms, and it flaxed and caught fire, and the bonds melted off his hand, and he found flesh and bone and a donkey, and put out of his hand, and took it, and he struck how many? One thousand men. One man. But was it the man that did it? Oh, no. It was the spirit of the Lord that came upon Samson. And the same reason why the 300 men that was with Gideon was going to be the spirit of the Lord was behind them. The same thing that's going to help you in your life is the spirit of the Lord. Don't you live without him today. Amen. When the spirit of the Lord is in control, numbers don't matter. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Would that make you today? You know, next time you listen to the news, and say the numbers are going up and so many thousands and so many people over here. And, and basically, statistically, you look at it, it's not bad as you think it is. But I, I don't want to make that with somebody in here. Somebody's going to say, well, Pastor Spider, you're trying to make it light. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying in the eyes of my God, this is a small thing. Oh, yes. Amen. Are y'all with me? Amen. Do you trust him today? Amen. Amen. And see, this needs to be in your heart, not just in your head. See, here's the problem. A lot of us have knowledge in our heart, in our head. We know what the word said, but it has not gotten to the heart. And I tell people all the time, I'm not telling you something I have read and I know. I know it works. Why? Because I've tried it. i trusted him. I've been living for the Lord. Yet did I do everything right? No. But God is with me. And this is what we need to get to, the church. It's time for to get this stuff out of our head and get it to our heart. Start living what you say you believe. And they think of us being arrogant. I just trust God. You know, she's sitting here, and I don't like to mess with her because she's sitting in the front. And I tell her, you know, if, if I go tomorrow, if the Lord take me, I'm fine. You know what? I know what's on the other side. If it's not, I ain't going to preach it no more. If God be for me, who can be against me? He said, let not your heart what? be troubled. You believe in God, believe in God for me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you. But guess what? He said, I'm not going to let nobody else do it. I'm going to go, and I'm going to prepare a place for you. For where I am, there you may be also. I believe that with all my heart. So whatever in the world's having fire, I'm good. I should better on the other side. I know y'all don't like that and don't understand it. But guess what? If you know Christ, you realize. Eyes have not seen he has not heard the things that God has prepared for them that love him. My question today, do you really love him? Or do you just have head knowledge and not heart knowledge? Amen. I, I can say this here. I, you know, I, I love my wife. You know what? Not because what I know of her, because she in my heart. Are y'all with me? It doesn't matter. It's just in my heart. Because he just had head knowledge on her. Things have changed. There's a difference when you love somebody. It's got to be in your heart. No matter what the situation, you're going to bite it out. Oh, every day is not a good day. Come on, somebody. I'm not going to pick a new most of All right. Let me go. But here we are. We get just like Gideon. Mm -hmm. Not only saw his character, not only saw his fearfulness, but then look at now Gideon and his fleece. And this is basically what we've been taught here Gideon and his fleece. Here's a man, God has showed him. He had a personal presence of God. God had told him what he would do. He sees people following him. Listen, and Gideon said unto God. Now here it is. Now here it is. No, no, no. The Lord has done all this work for you. Not, not what you got a problem. This is us. God has delivered you. You may have been sick and He's delivered you. You may have been broken. God, now you have a little money in your pocket. You, 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 you may not have a job. Now you got too many jobs. I mean, are y'all with me? And then you get to the point now, but then God said, I want you to do something but God. Look at this. And Gideon said unto God, 
If thou will save Israel by my hand, and thou hast said, he, they questioning God. No, Lord, you said, here's us, we're going to make a deal with God. And he said, behold, I will put a fleece of wool on the floor. And if the dew be on the fleece only, and it be dry upon all the earth beside, then shall I know that thou will save Israel by my hand, and thou said. See what he said? God, you, you do this, Lord. I know you will do what you say you'll do. And then in verse 28 and 38, he said, And it was so. For he rose early on the morrow, and thrust the fleece together, and wring out dew out of the fleece of the bowl of water. Kidding, you asked me to do something for you? I did it to prove to you that I would do what I say I would do. Yes. Can I park here for a moment? If some of you have asked God to do, and he had done it, you didn't know how you was going to meet that bill. You didn't know how you was going to get out of this situation. He said, Lord, if you get me out of this, I'll never go. And God was faithful. Yeah, Lord. Amen. Only for you to do it again. Look what happened in verse 39. And Gideon said unto God, Let not thy anger be hot against me. See, if somebody tell you that, if I'm talking to you, Sister Gonzalo, and you say, Okay, Pastor, why I did it, but I say, Sister Gonzalo, don't get mad at me. You know what I mean? I really don't believe what you said. Mm. Isn't that the case? You know when your children tell you to do something, and they say, well, don't get mad. You know they ain't did something. They really don't believe what you said, right? And he said, let not that anger be hot against me, and I will speak but this once. Now, you've already said it. Now, he said, now, I already proved he was held once to you, Gideon. And he said, I said, let me prove, I pray thee, but this once with the fleece. Let it now be dry upon the fleece, and upon the ground let, it, let, there, be no, let there be dew. And God did so that night. And it would dry upon the fleece only, and there was dew on the ground. So now in this verse here, we see the human weakness and divine encouragement. God had every reason to say, you know what, I don't even want to use you. I told you what I'd do, I've done it for you, but you don't want to do what I'm telling you to do. Aren't you glad God's not like us? Amen. When we fail, he don't give up here. Up to this point, Gideon had personally, let me have to remind you what Gideon had experienced. God told him, he called to him, you're a mighty man of power, a man of strength, of courage, and you're going to deliver my people. Gideon had a personal encounter, Christ, the angel of the Lord. We witnessed his public faith before the battle of his own people, right? And in private, Gideon had, the, had not the confidence. In the midst of all this here, God had done, he still didn't have the confidence in himself. Even though the promise of God said, I will be with you, just don't doubt me. He still did. Now this is the part of the story we all grew up on, right? In Sunday school, right? Here's a good part of that. Many people are the same way. We heard what God did with 300 people, delivering the people of God. Many people today deal with God that way. We want to make a deal. Like, we're like, let's make a deal, God. Lord, you, you give me this here. This is what I do for you. This is not let's make a deal. This is not the price is right. We're called to walk by what? Faith, Faith and not by sight. Amen, church. Amen. So what does that bring it to? Gideon's doubt. Look what it says here in verse 36. And Gideon says that, if thou shalt say Israel by my hand, if thou say it. Here's the problem it starts with the word if. Hmm. Right, that's, a, that's a powerful word. If. That word here, if is a preposition. It means a possibility of something already has been done or sensed. He should have said, since instead of if. Well, Lord, since you're going to say Israel by me, not if. If God said it, he will do it. Are y'all with me, church? He doubted. it. But because Gideon was looking at himself, it was hard for him to trust in God. Amen? Because if God would turn, his, turn the people against him to fight him, Gideon, the people that's going to kill you, now it's with you. You don't believe I'm working? Sure, he can win the battle by using Gideon. And let me pause here. What is it in your life that God is trying to tell you, I want you to do? What is he trying to get you the victory of in your own life? You see what he has done? He, he, the church, the body of Christ, we need to believe God. Amen. God can control this pandemic. Yes, he can. God can control the social injustice, injustices that's going on. We just need to what? Believe God. Amen. Amen. The greatest weakness is human weakness. Because there's nothing that God cannot do. Look at Gideon's de demand. Verse 37 said, But I will put a fleece of wool on the floor, and the dew on the fleece only, and the dry on the earth on the other side. Then shall I know that thou shalt save Israel by my hand, as thou hast said. 
And then verse 39, and Gideon said unto God, let not thy anger, I said it before, I will speak thy once. Let me prove, I pray thee, but this once with the fleece, let it now be on dry ground in the fleece. And this all was human weakness comes in. Gideon demands God to give him a proof. Now you think about this. He's God. Why do I have to prove anything to you? Now I'm going to go somewhere where y'all don't think this can go. God tells us to prove him. Gideon asked God to prove himself to Gideon. God is telling you and I to prove yourself to me. He said, bring all your what? Tithes into the storehouse. There may be meat in my house. And prove me, he says. And there when I would what? Open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. There would not be a room to stand. And God said, Gideon said, prove yourself to me. And God is saying here to Gideon, he said to you and I, you give and I prove myself to you. Amen, church. Amen. God has given us everything we need, church. We just need to trust him. Amen. We need to trust him. Amen. Gideon's disobedience calls him not to get. However, God does not dissatisfy Gideon because he knows that this piece of uh, sheepskin is like a sponge. He soaks it up in the bay with around it. So even though he was able to bring a bowl of water in the fleet, he was not convinced. The next night, he asked God to reverse the conditions in the text. To make the ground wet and dry. God does that too. Yet even God is not disappointed. Amen. Amen. You think about it. Gideon, you don't want to trust me? God will get angry and kick him out. Aren't you? That's the kind of God. This is God of grace and a God of mercy. We may come in this to God and we have not been faithful to him. Did God get angry and kick us out? No, he did not. Amen. Amen. But look at Gideon, verse 4. And God did that so that night. It would dry up on the fleece only, and there would dew on the ground also. Now, this satisfied Gideon because he knew he could move forward now. God was on his side. God had already did what's in him. Now, I'm saying to you, what is it in your life that God is trying to tell you? He had proved himself faithful. Amen. He had saved you. He had delivered you. He had provided for you. He gave you hope to eternal life. And he said, all I want you to do is just trust me. Jude 24 says, Now to him that is what? Able to keep you from falling and present you falling before his presence with exceeding joy. Amen. He says, what is your plea? So you trust in God? Lack of faith? You're not trusting his word? What God said, don't you believe he will do? Remember the just shall what? Live, Live by faith. Amen. Hebrews 11 and 6 said, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and he is the rewarder of him that diligently seek him. My question today is, who are you seeking today? In the midst of this human weakness, God wants to encourage you if you only trust him. I know this is a long sermon. There's a lot I said in this here. But if you don't get this here, God is not with you to look at your own strength. He wants you to look what he can do through you if you only trust him. So as we stand to our feet today, maybe you're at a point in your life that you are human weakness. And you need to be, I'm not asking you to come to the altar or nothing like that, but right where you are. I need you to just raise your hand and say, Lord, yes, I, I have not trusted you the way I should. I have, I have not been doing what you have called me, God. I've seen what you have done. But I'm asking you, Lord, forgive me for not trusting you. Remember, faith is coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The reason why your faith is not, maybe you don't want to hear the word of God. You don't have time for God. God can do what no one else can do if you only trust him. If you're here today and you need special prayer, just raise your hand and I'll pray for you. God can do. I see one. And maybe you're watching this on Facebook or you're on YouTube and God is speaking to your heart. You'll be hearing right now. He hears your cry. Father, we come right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. We pray, Father, for each one, Father, who has raised their hand. Those that are here, Father. Those, Father, who are watching us on Facebook and those on YouTube. Father, that they have not trusted you, Father. But we want to say thank you, Father, because you are forgiving God. You say we confess our sins, that you will be faithful and just and forgive us and be cleansed from all unrighteousness. We thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. We ask you now, Father, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Give us the ability, Father, to walk in faith and not by sight. And then, Father, we be careful to give your name the praise and the glory. 
We will no longer look at ourselves as we see ourselves, but we will look at ourselves as you see us, as salt of the earth, as light of the world, as a peculiar people, as a blood bond, born again, child of the king. And we'll be kept with your name, praise and glory. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a hand praise. Let's give it. And you see it right where you are? We're going to go right into our communion service. And for those who will commune with us, and for the sake of the social distancing that we have, there are communion articles that have already been wiped off and clean for you on the seat covers there. We're going to ask you to take those. We're going to do like we normally do. We're going to read the scripture that is taken from 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, starting at verse 23. We're going to read those, and then we're going to have the blessings upon those. We're going to take the bread and that. For those that have, let us, let us read. I receive of the Lord that which he also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take. Eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do it in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is a new testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthy, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. And this is very important. Listen to what he said. When you take these articles and not reverencing God, he said, For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Means some people have died. For we will judge ourselves, we shall not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we will not condemn with the world. Say, wherefore, my brother, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hungry, let him eat at home, that you come not together in the condemnation, and the rest I will set in order when I come. So this time we're going to ask that before we have a word of prayer, we want you to take a time and just the things that you need to do is confess your sins. If you confess that something in your life that hindered you from taking this communion here, we're going to pray for God's blessings on you this article as I come down. Remember the Bible said, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He said, he that said, he have not sinned is a liar and the truth is not in him. Because we all do things that are wrong. Amen. But God said, you confess it, he's faithful just to forgive you. So let us pray. Father, we thank you, Father, for your word today. We thank you, Father, how you use Gideon, Father, to show us that you can be trusted if we only believe. And so, Father, we ask you now, God, that you realize you know our lives, Father. You said in your word, in you we live, we move, and have our being. You know our uprising, our downfalling. And Father, you know we have not done all the things that we should. But we ask you to forgive us right now. And we thank you for the blood of your son, Jesus Christ, that cleanses from all unrighteousness. Now we ask you, Lord, that you would bless this bread, which is your body, Father, that which you broke for us. Bless this juice that represents the blood which shed permission of our sin. Amen. And you said, Father, you, you would take all these, Father, and you put them in the sea of forgiveness because of your blood. Yes, we thank you, Father, for the trust that we have in you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Man, we're going to ask for those that have it. You can take your, these tab. And you take the bread. The bread represents the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so let's commune the body of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ together. We pull back the second tab and for those that are with us, and I forgot to say that those are in at home, hoping you have maybe cracker or some juice. And remember, this is only symbolic of what Christ has already done. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So let's take the juice that represents the blood to forgive us for our sins. And he said, the rest he was set in order when he comes. So they didn't have a benediction at that time. But we're going to remind each of you here for uh, that you can continue to watch us and like us um, for all that God has done for us. It's never too late to come to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Just as you are. Amen. Out one plea. He, he, don't try to say, well, I, I got to get right, then I'm going to come to church. No, you can never get right. Amen. Christ can make you right. 
Amen? Amen. So you just confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe that God has raised from the dead. You shall be saved. It's just that easy. Amen? So God loves you and God forgives you. And we also want to remember that it's still time to give. The Lord wants to give. And because of social distancing, we know that those that are here, the trays are in the back of the church then. You can give your offering as you exit the church. And also for those, we want to remind you that you can still give to us through Venmo, which is a cash app. You can put it in Good News Church Pasadena. And then if you want to mail your tithes and offerings into the Lord, you can just write to Good News Church P.O. Box uh, 92954, Pasadena, California, 91109-2954. God received. He loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Remember to share us and like us on YouTube and uh, subscribe to us. Share this one. This is an easy way for evangelism. God loves you. This he loves everyone else. Amen. So if you never understand, before we have a benediction, I want you to sing this song that we've been singing each week. And those that be in prayer for us. And remember, Bible study on Wednesday night from 7.30 to 8.30. Amen. And we sing it. I have decided. I have decided.